In this, the third and final installment of my wedding editing series, I show you how I performed an edit using Capture One Pro. A bit of a change of format this time, I'm going to explain what I did rather than explain real time as editing as the video would just be far too long. Please check the video description for links to download Capture One Pro and also to download the style used in this video. While you're here, why not check out parts one and two? And why not like and subscribe? Okay, let's start with the crop. If we take a look at our crop values here, as you can see, I've used a 16 by nine ratio for a more dramatic and cinematic look rather than the default ratio from the camera. Let's take a look. As you can see, it's quite a deep crop. I gave myself quite a bit of room with this image so that I could play around with the composition in post. And after quite a bit of fiddling, I gave myself this nice tight composition. Also, I added a little bit of rotation, as you can see from these slanted edges basically just to straighten out the horizon where the grass meets the trees. Also, there's a sort of horizontal and vertical rule of thirds going on. Okay, that's the crop. Let's take a look at the adjustments and the layers. I'll go through the layers one by one, explaining as I go. So let's just turn all of the layers off, just leaving us with the background to start with. So we're left here with the background and its adjustments. First of all, I applied my default style. Let's take a look, styles and presets, which is the wedding basic. I then made a few adjustments to the wedding basic. I went to the exposure and changed the contrast. The default, I think, is about minus 15. Yes, minus 15. I took it back from minus 15 up to six because it was just looking too washed out. This image just needed a tad more contrast. Next, I altered the clarity from the wedding basic default. In the clarity, I altered the clarity slider from the default of minus 15 back to zero, as I didn't need clarity in this image. I also wanted to deepen the greens and the trees and the grass and the bushes. So next up is the color editor. And from the color editor, I first selected the greens, so color editor and greens. And the hue I adjusted from the wedding basic of 10 all the way over to around 29, just to make the greens a little more bluey green, more than the default wedding basic. And then I reduced the lightness of the greens from the default minus 10 to make them more rich. Now we have much more subdued, dark, rich foliage and in the blues I reduced the saturation a little in his suit and also lightened it a little bit. That's the blues. Next I added another colour. I picked a yellow using the colour picker so that I could enhance the lighter colours in the foliage. If I just turn this off and then on you can see it enhances the lighter areas of the foliage, the trees, gives us a slight yellow tinge and adds some contrast to the greens. Just for effect and to make it more interesting in the grass and a little bit on the tree trunks. Next, colour balance. In the shadow I added just a tad, a little bit of blue. If I temporarily reset this you can see just a tinge of blue comes into the shadows. Just a slight blue hint and in the mid-tones a tinge of orange. Just subtle changes with the colour balance tool just for effect. Then if we check the high dynamic range as usual I upped the highlights to 100 to give me maximum room to bring up the whites and the lighter colours and I set the shadows to 30 just to give me wiggle room, give me room to play with the shadow areas on further editing. And in the exposure, I just added a small amount of exposure just to lighten all of the tones. 
and up the brightness to 17 to bring up the midtones. And that's the changes that I made to the exposure. If we look at before, this is the before button, Alt plus the arrow, before. So there we have the image before. And then after, you can see it's just, in general, lightened up the image. Give ourselves a nice, even blank canvas. And if we take a look at the levels, you can see I've increased the lighter colours and the whites using the right tab. Bought in a little bit more black using the left tab. Let's take a look. Oh, and I've played with the midtones a little bit just to balance it. So if we take a little look, there's before and there's after. So using the level tool, we've added contrast in the right way. The lighter colours and whites are lighter and the blacks are just a little darker. And if we go to the white balance, I just set it to daylight. It was daylight and daylight looked absolutely correct for this scene. Let's take a look at the adjustments we've done on just the background layer. There's before, and just with those changes, here's after. And already it's looking very different. Now let's move on to the adjustment layers. We'll turn on layer one, let's select it first, then turn it on. And you can see right away that it's darkened the edges. What this layer does, if I turn it off and on, it uses a big vignette to darken the edges. And if I just press T, there you go, you can see the radial gradient that I've applied. If I press M, you can see the mask. The adjustments I made on the gradient were to bring down all of the tones, and then darken all of the tones, and then to reduce the brightness, which reduces the mid-tones only, and have much less of an effect on the highlights in the scenery and this big dark area is starting to shape our scene. Now for layer two, so let's turn on layer two and if we press M to look at the mask, I think I should select layer two first. There's the mask for layer two and all I've done again is to bring down the brightness. I've used a brush tool here for selective darkening. As you can see here, I've darkened the shadowy areas of the trees I've darkened most of the places where the sky's shining through. I've darkened the edges of the trunks to start to give them more shape, to make them more effective. And I've also darkened this foreground here to start to create an isolated area. I'll turn off the mask and we'll take a look. There it is, off and on. And you can see where the darkening has happened, creating shapes and isolating the subjects. Okay, layer three, turn it on and select it. And view the mask, and all I've done here is to, using a brush, create a sort of a semicircle to darken the foreground even more, just isolating this area. Trying to create a sort of a stage, and all I've done is reduce the brightness down here to achieve that. Now for layer 4, just scroll up, turn it on and select it. And let's view the mask, press M. And all I've done here with a brightness of plus 12 is use the brush to paint the highlight areas of the trees. Just to lighten them up and make them look a little more 3D. A bit more impressive. And I've used a radial gradient here to lighten up the grass at their feet just to make a slight natural looking pool of light around them. Just to start to isolate the happy couple in the scene. And layer five, let's turn it on, select it, press M to view the mask. And this one's really easy. All I've done is created a simple radial gradient and then up the brightness just to isolate them. So if I just turn the layer off and then on, you can see it highlights this area. Just to draw the eye to them a little more and bathe them in a little pool of light. Layer 6, and this layer is used for selective highlighting. So if we select the layer and view the mask, what I've done is to increase the brightness and then using the brush tool, I've lightened the edges of the foliage, some areas of the trees, the bark, and 
a few patches on the floor for variation, and the bush, just to add texture to the scene with a slight mottled effect in the trees and a little bit of lightening of the trunks to shape them. It's pretty subtle, but it all adds up. And then the final layer, which is the repair layer. Let's take a look. Let's just zoom in so we can see what we're doing a little better. Now, if we turn the layer off, you can see there are twigs all around on the floor. And all I did was use a repair layer, grabbing a source from here and repaired all these little areas around here. The repair got rid of all of those twigs, or the major ones anyway. And if I turn my brush on, press B, you can see the source and the destination. In fact, that's the source, and that's the last destination, I think. I just repaired all around this area. It uses the same source, so you have one source with multiple destinations. If you want multiple sources, you have to use more layers. I think the repair layer did a pretty good job. It's looking reasonably clean now, especially from the distance that we're looking at it. And if we press M, while I've got the repair layer active, you can see the repairs. These are the destinations. The source was just about here. And then we just applied it to the various destinations to get rid of all the little twigs. So let's just turn off the mask. There we go, that's the finished image. I think considering Capture One is not Photoshop, that's done a pretty good job. Okay, let's take a look at before and after. So here we are, here's before, and here's after, and before, and after. Not bad at all, I think.